Welcome to the Manhattan, which, according to the note on my freight cuffs, was sold to us by the Canarsing Indians in 1626 for about $25, tax included. Today, that amount will barely buy you a local phone call, a cup of coffee, and a ride on the subway, if you don't get mugged on the way. This is Harold, who takes the 755 train each morning when it pulls in at 830. But he doesn't care as long as perky Penelope Perkins is at his side, or preferably on his lap. Seats are not too easy to come by during rush hour unless you use your noodle like our friend Harold here. Considering the fact that he pulls this gag every morning, you'd think these ding-dongs would catch on. just got a new job as a cab driver, and the boss is wishing him luck on his first day out. Believe me, he'll need it. Gee willikers, when I'm in New York, I can never get a cab, but poor Harold here hasn't picked up a single customer. We know why, don't we, folks? Won't some friendly, red-blooded, all-American nice guy please tell our boy about that silly sign he picked up? Thank you, friendly, red-blooded, all-American nice guy. Must be an out-of-towner.
waiting all this time for somebody to take his cab. And wouldn't you know it, somebody just did. A truck. Harold's luck about to change? Who knows? One thing is sure, he may have trouble picking up people, but knocking them down seems to be no problem at all. <laughs> Business seems to be improving. Harold's got his first fair. Come to think of it, fair isn't really the right word to use when talking about business. It's been lousy. Gosh, all Friday. Don't tell me there's more heartbreak ahead for Harold. The stupid landlord won't let this guy have his luggage till he pays his rent. Whatever happened to the milk of human kindness? I think it just turned to sour cream. doesn't get a customer soon, I'm gonna climb right up there on your screen and hire the cab myself. Hold it, maybe I won't have to. I think he's finally caught a couple of live ones. Gee, Harold's so happy about his apparent change of luck, he's paid no attention to the speed limit. Naughty, naughty, but he really had no choice. The two guys told him to get them to Penn Station as fast as possible, and the customer is always right. Are you ready for this? The two guys flash their badges and tell Harold they don't have to pay. They're government agents. Boy, here's a switch. The cop flashes his badge and Harold has to pay for a speeding ticket. Oh, cruel world. some good news. Harold's all-time idol, Babe Ruth, is making an appearance at an orphanage, which fortunately happens to be right across the street. This better work out. I can't take any more disappointments today. There he is, in the flesh, the pride of the Yankees himself. Gee, I'm glad Harold took out some time to see him. Took out some time? From what? From not working? I can't believe it. The babe is actually hailing a cab. Go get him, Harold. After batting zero all day, you're about to make a home run.
looks like Babe has no desire to run home. He's got a date at Yankee Stadium in five minutes. So let's go easy on the conversation and hard on the gas pedal. Boy, I think Harold's just asking for another ticket. Look at the way he's driving. Poor Babe knows it's tough to face a screwball across home plate, but it's worse having one behind the steering wheel. After all, what a thrill! Babe Ruth in his taxi. Real schmill fella. Don't look now, but he forgot to pay. Well, if it isn't Harold and Dagmar Dingle who've just been married. If it isn't, folks, somebody slipped us the wrong picture. All the well wishes seem to be friends of the bride. She's getting raindrops of rice, and he's getting a shower of shoes. Rice pudding and shoe fly pie. What a sweet way to start their honeymoon. Going ashore. Oh my, I sure hope the kids get here soon. Their honeymoon cottage is about to sail into the sunset. Hurry up, you two. One minute to go, or you'll spend your first night together on the gangplank. How romantic. This is really getting exciting. Will the steward take care of the luggage before Harold takes care of the steward? Wait and see. Don't worry about your husband, lady, says he. I'll let him on board as soon as he comes back. How, oh, how, oh, famous last words. Looks like doom for the groom, unless he makes it to his room. Luck. Harold gets caught by the engineer who thinks he's a new crew member. He's supposed to be in the boiler room below.
wedding night is supposed to be hot stuff. But this is hardly the way our boy dreamed about it. Here for Dagmar here. She's got an upset tummy from too much ocean and a broken heart from too little devotion. Softly she whispers in the night, I wonder what's become of Carol. And just as softly, the trade winds carry their answer back to her. He's in the boiler room. He's in the boiler room. Meanwhile, Dagmar's better half is getting pretty burned up himself while his brain asks the musical question, where, oh, where has my little dad gone? Who cares? He cares. Out women. First she wants him in a room, and now that he's here, she screams her blooming head off. Crazy kid, I guess she's been away from Harold so long, she can't remember what he looks like. All right, Dagma, let's get with it. All of a sudden, you remember it was Harold. Well, I hope you'll also remember that bit about the trade winds. He's in the boiler room, in the boiler room. Dagma, that's the ticket. Hubby Harold is free at last. Well, as free as any married man ever has a chance to be. You know, it really gets me right here to see our two newlyweds together again after that horrible chain of events. Say, doesn't this happy occasion call for a special kiss? Don't be shy, Harold. No, not him. Your bride, silly. Well, well. Looks like we can't monkey around anymore. And we've got to close the door on today's session. But don't be put out. I know you'll go eight next time over stuff like this. Uh -huh.